All right, so we shall start now. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for dropping by. Uh, we really appreciate your support. And as usual, I'm seeing quite a, a few familiar names. Thank you so much. And as usual, you are invited to be part of the program by you asking questions or um, sharing your perspective by typing that in in the comment section. Yeah. So, okay, we'll start now. Participants will be trained with a positive mental attitude armed with skills against an adversary and defend themselves to escape creatively in any situation following the principles of the art of war. So that is the short overview uh, about the corporate program that our guest speaker is offering for corporate uh, audience. All right, so therefore I look forward to delving deep into the subject because when I heard about the, or, when I, or rather when I read about the topic today, first thing came to mind was combat and survival, right? So, and I can relate this a lot into my life because uh, we'll, know, we'll talk more about that later. So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to Point of View series. Today is our 46th episode, right? And the Point of View is really a live online talk show where we invite guests to share their knowledge, experiences, and wisdom um, with our audience. And let me also reiterate the purpose of Point of View series is basically to enlighten each other and hopefully along the line of getting the light bulb moment so that perhaps we all could act upon for the betterment of ourselves and others around us. So, and here with us today, as you can see on your screen, yeah, we are honored to have Francis Albert. Thank you very much for being with us today and spending your precious Friday with us at POV. All right, and, um, and also to our viewers again and again, thank you for your support. And as usual, short introduction about Omar and I, then we will have our guest speaker to introduce himself. So, Omar? Yeah, hi everybody, welcome to our 46th episode. Uh, we have an exciting speaker, especially on a topic that I'm also uh, excited about, which is uh, self-defense. Uh, my name is Omar, and I call myself a conversation coach. What I do is I help people develop better communication skills uh, so that they can, they can interact more effectively and develop better confidence in speaking. All right, so with that, let me pass you back to Jack. Uh, Jack? Thank you, Omar. And uh, about myself, profession-wise, for 13 years, I work in learning and development unit in a few multinational companies. And now my area of focus is in image and professional and pro personal and professional growth and development. 70% uh, of my business comes from corporate trainings and the rest is on one-on-one -on -one coaching and mentoring. That's all about me and Omar. So our guest speaker today is, let me read about um, short brief about our guest speaker today and he can continue on um, introducing himself. Yeah, uh, Francis Albert is a lifetime member of Frontier Trainings USA, mentored by Clinton Swain. He is experiential trainer and HRDF certified trainer. He has helped to develop various programs on human capital through research during these years. He is an active public speaker and also a specialist on awareness and self-defense for corporate uh, level. Yeah? The, he is also the founder of Pertubuhan Seni Beladiri Jiu-Jitsu Tanakaru Selangor and Wilaya established in the year 2001. So let's continue further to know more about Francis Albert. Yeah. So let me take that. Uh, let me pick it up from you, from you, Jack. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you're uh, um, around my age, <laughs> and uh, when Bruce Lee was alive, I was a kid. I was in um, I was in uh, secondary school. You know, and like most uh, uh, red-blooded kids, Bruce Lee was our hero. And uh, my one of my favorite scenes was if you if you don't know Bruce Lee, Bruce Lee is a martial artist. Uh, he's a legend. Uh, he's dead now. 
but he was uh, an Asian martial um, artist who made um, Kung Fu movies popular in the West and of course around the world. So one of my favorite uh, scenes in, a, in one of the Bruce Lee movies was that uh, he was on, a, on, a, on a, one of those tongkang, you know, those big um, Chinese uh, ships, junks, right? They call it junk. And they were sailing to an island where there was going to be a competition. I don't know whether you saw this movie, um, uh, Francis, you probably did. Yeah, yeah, um, yes. Yeah. And it was called Enter the Dragon. I'm a fan I, of Bruce Lee too, yeah. <laughs> yeah obviously, yeah. yeah. So um, on that ship was another guy. I, I think he was uh, English. And he was bullying all the other people in the ship. And then um, he wanted to pick a fight with Bruce Lee as well. <clears throat> now, Bruce Lee said, you know, there's not enough room on this, on this boat. Let's go fight on the island, um, on, on a smaller island, as they were passing by the island. So the, the, um, the, the bully got on the small boat, the small sampan. And when he got on the small sampan, they, they let go of the sampan so that it drifted away from the big, the big junk. You know, and then he started screaming uh, or yelling at them. And, um, but before that, Bruce Lee said, uh, uh, he asked Bruce Lee, what's your style of fighting? And Bruce Lee said, my style of fighting is to, um, the art of fighting without fighting. Was that right, Francis? He said, the art of fighting yeah. without fighting. So essentially, when Bruce Lee let him off on that small sampan, um, Bruce Lee had won the fight without even fighting with the guy. Right? So today is such an uh, appropriate topic because uh, Francis is, Francis has a similar philosophy about fighting, which is uh, 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 his secret weapon is awareness. I believe uh, he uses awareness as a way to fight without fighting. Yeah? So Francis, uh, could you give us a brief about um, what you're going to be talking about today uh, in terms of the art of fighting? All right. I'm, I'm going to touch. Hi, everyone. My name is Francis Albert. Thanks to Omar and Jacqueline. Okay, I'll go very briefly. Okay, what we're going to talk today is awareness, identifying the threat, body language. Okay, uh, prevention is better than cure, do's and don'ts, what you're not supposed to carry in the car, basic Malaysian law, understanding what you're not supposed to carry in the car and what you can carry in the car, especially if there are roadblocks. So these are basic things. Also, adaptation and situational awareness. Okay. Okay. All right. So I would like to start uh, with the topic today is art of war, right? Isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Now, art of war, why I choose this? Because this thousands of year old general strategy, which can be used in business, can be also applied in combat. So it's about strategy, planning, and decision making. Okay? These three things. Okay, now I'd like to start about uh, why winning without fighting. Now, the most famous quote by Sun Tzu of the war is, to subdue the enemy without fighting is the ace of skill. Now, sometimes in life, we must always think twice before our reaction. Every cause has a reaction. Isn't it? So, okay, let me start simply by our Malaysian lifestyle. This is my favorite part I like to share. <laughs> okay, uh, when I go for breakfast in the morning, right? Now I sit in the coffee shop with my cup of coffee and I watch people. Now, uh, I'm not being paranoid, but I'd like to share with all of you that we Malaysians, we like to have breakfast, we like to eat, correct? Right? With our friends, our buddies, you know? You see, sometimes in life, we get carried away, okay? Especially, I notice some people doing this. You can see this wallet, right? Sometimes we forget, we put this wallet on the table, and we start to put the handphone on the wallet. Wow. This is something like a free offering to the public. See, I mean, uh, it's not wrong. Don't get it wrong, okay? Uh, it's not wrong to put your wallet there. You can put your wallet and your handphone but you never know who is sitting beside you, the next table. See, that's why uh, we need to develop this mindset, a part of our lifestyle, so we can, we can live in this uh, safe, safe world. You know? we, we can go anywhere, we're feeling safe, feeling secure. 
that we are not exposed to danger. So, ladies and gentlemen, please keep your beautiful handphone and your wallets in your pocket. Okay, because it is very unsafe. Okay, it's not only the person who is sitting the next table, it could be a snatch thief. You never know, one of them will just walk in, snatch your phone, run on his motorbike. By the time you scream and yell, your phone is gone. And what's worse going to happen is if you're going to have an appointment with your client, how are you going to handle the situation? Well, this question I think we must ask ourselves, right? What are you going to do now? So uh, it's a. Uh, I will not blame anyone for this. If if I if I do that, I think I would say that uh, maybe I'm jealous. So this is a lesson learned that uh, I should uh, take care of my belongings. It's my responsible, my handphone. So uh, we have to be responsible for our valuables. Right? It's okay to get angry or excited or furious when somebody steals your, your precious uh, Gucci handbag, right? <laughs> All these things. So, so you have to be responsible for the thing. Okay? Right. So, uh, so it's best to subdue the enemy without fighting. Okay, another example. Now, I'm sure most of you drive, drive to work, right? Now, some of you may use the LRP or MRP, isn't it? So, for example, now, if, uh, okay, if I'm driving, sorry, sorry. If, uh, I'll open this to the audience, okay? If you are driving your car and it's red light, you're supposed to stop. Correct. Now, during this instance, if you carelessly leave your handbag or your laptop on the passenger seat and no one is sitting, without you knowing, you may think it's just a grab food guy coming or what, but behind a grab food guy is a snatch thief. Right. So, because you are seated on a higher position, lower position, right? Motorbike is higher than you. So, you can just peek through pick through and see through your window that your handbag is there. Now, ladies and gentlemen, all it takes is two seconds. Two seconds to smash your window and take your precious valuable Gucci handbag or coach handbag. So or whatever, even a, a, what they call this, even a man can be careless. So I cannot be gender biased and woman is always a target. We guys also sometimes we forget, we forget because we also got stress, you know, we put our laptop there. And bam, that's it. Your laptop is gone. That is going to win your day, your entire day. So I think the best thing to do is wake up in the morning, put a big smile on your face in the mirror and say, today is going to be a great day. I'm going to get organized, make sure I'm safe, I go to work safe and come back and see my kids or my beloved wife or my husband. So this kind of mindset we should create. You see, sometimes uh, we are just human beings. We may forget things. You see? So, so, any questions about this? Yeah. So you basically you're touching on awareness as a way of avoiding getting into trouble, right? Without yes, yes. yeah, without uh, having to uh, instead of uh, uh, letting yourself become vulnerable to yes. attack, right? Yes. To attacks, yes. um, be aware of how you can be vulnerable. Uh, yes. You know leaving your valuables on the table um, yes. and then uh, being careless about um, uh, while you're in traffic. Those are ways of um, preventing um, trouble. Yes. Uh, okay. Which is great. You know, so uh, if you have this awareness, you basically avoid trouble and you don't even have to know martial arts. All right. Yes, exactly. Because you won't be fighting. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right. Can, can I just uh, understand a bit of your background, uh, Francis? Yeah, um, sure. you're a jujitsu grandmaster, I believe. Yeah, yeah, I've been teaching for 25 years. So what's interesting is that you've been teaching martial arts for 25 years, and now instead of talking about how to fight, you're talking about how to prevent fighting. Okay. How to avoid the situations and fighting, right? Yeah, that's um, a great question. Yeah. Right. right. I'll answer your question now. Okay. okay. Uh, when I started off, I was about 14 years old. I started off with karate, then later on I went to Singapore, I picked up some uh, Shaolin. While working, I just go and learn for the fun, you know, because of this Bruce Lee's movies, I was just fascinated with this guy. 
So later, when I came back to Malaysia, I started to pick up Jiu-Jitsu. And 10 years back, I also done some Muay Thai. Because at that time, 10 years back, uh, they was just talking of MMA and all that. So Bruce Lee actually is a father of MMA. Because this guy is an intelligent fighter. He may be cocky and uh, aggressive the way he talks, uh, too proud of himself. But he's an intellectual guy, I tell you that, honestly. Because he knows how to hybrid the system. Yeah. So that's how what I created in my academy is I combine jujitsu, not only jujitsu, awareness. I educate my students on awareness, when not to fight, when to fight. Okay. So winning without fighting is the best. Yeah. You can avoid run. You can if you cannot fly, you run and scream. Get out of the situation. Avoid confrontation because confrontation can be deadly. You see, sometimes we human beings, we are in the comfort zone. We feel safe. Okay, for example, now let's say Mr. X. Okay, Mr. X takes the LRP every day for the past two years, thinking that it's safe. Safe because nothing happens to him when he takes LRP at station X. It goes back to Y, which is his home, right? Every day. X to Y every day for two years. Now, suddenly one day that uh, he was sort of, a, maybe he had some stress. And I say we are human, right? Sometimes we, we don't think straight. Same thing goes to me. I'm also human. I can be also a target, right? Now, what happens is this, this Mr. X just used the phone like this and start walking. Now, little did he realize that he's walking at the wrong direction. Now, for example, if I'm holding the phone like this and the vehicle is coming from my left, this is my left hand, right? I'm walking on the wrong side. So there goes my handphone. You see? So this is a simple ex uh, explanation about comfort zone, feeling too safe. There's no safe place in this world, ladies and gentlemen. Love yourself, love your valuables. Please walk against the flow of traffic where you can identify the threat, whether the motorbike is coming close to the edge, don't walk to the edge. Because when you turret, when you got a snatch, you're going to fall, you're going to lose a limb, you're going to dislocate your shoulder, especially from behind, you're going to have head injuries. You know, so uh, please love yourself and think of personal safety. Walk opposite direction and you'll have a nice day. So safety is number one, your priority. My concern is your safety. Because yeah. I think these criminals, snatch thieves, they are unmerciful. Even a pregnant woman can get attacked. So I cannot accept this. I am a very compassionate person to both human beings, male or female, it does not matter. You know, everyone should be treated with respect. Yeah. yeah. So Francis, um, while it's a good idea to avoid um, uh, uh, to avoid being open to attacks and, and uh, accidents and things like that. Um, can you help uh, give um, my friend here, Jack, some yeah. advice? Yeah. <laughs> because <laughs> sure, for, sure. Someone like Jack, for someone like Jack, and then some, sometimes with their friends, yeah, uh, yeah. they go out uh, jogging um, in the early hours of the morning or late in the evening by themselves. Yeah. And um, they may not have anything on on them to be stolen but yes. they're open they're open to attacks still right uh they're yes. open to attacks so what yes. how and at the same time they're not martial artists yes. right and um of course there's a if there's a full-on attack uh it, it's going to be dangerous for them it's going to be bad but what are some of the things minimal things that they can have with them to help defend themselves what yes, can they sure. bring with themselves or what can they do to help defend themselves right okay now uh all right, now uh, it depends if you are jogging in the wee hours of the morning, like 5 a.m., it's dark, it's dangerous. I would not recommend to do that. You should do maybe slightly uh, later, like 6. Yeah, we, we all tell her that. Yeah. We all tell her that, Francis, but she still yeah. does it. Yeah, yeah. So it's good to carry a torch light, number one. Of course, uh, I'm not asking you to be a gadget man. Okay, for your own safety, you should carry a pepper spray. For the ladies, any pepper spray so for the guys you can carry nothing is wrong with that a pepper spray is to it's a defensive tool all right number one number two you can do this 
Okay, let me wear my cap. You can wear a cap. It's cool. Yeah, it's cool, right? Wearing a cap, go for your jogging. Now, little do you attacker you realize this is a weapon. Now, how are you going to do a weapon is I can demonstrate to you now. If the guy is weaponless, now listen carefully. Weaponless means no parang, no knife. He's a, maybe a sicko, maybe he's, he's, he's a maybe he's a how do I say a sexual predator. Uh, sexual predator is a big word. It can be a stalker. It can be uh, you know just keeping an eye on ladies. You know just come behind and touch you, or come from the front pretend to you know come and touch you or pretend to bump into you. So now this is a tool of distraction and also a good weapon. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my side this way. Okay, can you all see me now? Can you see me? Right. Okay. Great. Now, if the attacker is here, right in front here, right, my target is his eyes. When I use the cap, I just slap. When I slap at this, at this, at this speed, at this speed with this cap, I go for the eyes. So sometimes your cap, you have something here, some metal piece, right? That is very good too, because that can actually give him a shock when he strike his eyes. Kick him in the right in the groin. Not once but twice. Once you kick him twice, you run and scream and go to a place where you see a lot of wakers, a lot of public. This is how you escape. Please remember rule number one. When you strike the attacker, you make sure you get it really hard from you. Two strikes and run for your life. And please do not go down. To be so pity and merciful and look at him whether he's he's not going to die with this cap <laughs> he will just get a, a surprise use the surprise this is called the element of surprise okay <coughs> sorry uh, okay so this is called element of surprise so this can be used and uh, pepper spray also can be used pepper spray yeah I don't have a pepper spray now I just simply show you a mouth spray <laughs> okay it can be used now how to use a pepper spray is a question mark right I'm sure some of you may own a pepper spray or in the states you call it the maze m-a-c-e maze right now when you use a pepper spray a good pepper spray should be able to travel a distance of about seven feet a good one so make sure you buy a good pepper spray not like a lipstick size so small like this it's not going to work now the second thing uh, uh, during my corporate training, in my years of my training, huh? I've been training corporate for almost 10 years. So there are questions like some ladies ask me, hey, what happens if I'm in the car park? So the lady, I asked the lady a question. Okay, can I ask this question to you, Jacqueline? Okay, how do you think you're going to carry the, the pepper spray? In your handbag or how are you going to carry it? I think I think it's pretty much well. If I were to think about it now, because I'm quite rational, <laughs> and also okay. I've, I've heard a bit from you, I think yeah. uh, because you know it's um, you are walking. The the environment is there's some form of suspicion that there's there might be possibility of you getting this kind of stuff, right? So I think yeah. we have to hold it. Um, I mean, hold it. Um, it's so that it's easy for you to use it later absolutely absolutely yeah my okay. um just to extend that a little bit um there was this time when the news was um full of um maybe everyone knows this um the 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 incidents that happens in bangsa shopping complex that was like oh many okay years i back. think i saw that i saw that video footage yeah many years back right back yeah, then yeah, yeah. um yeah i bought a pepper spray and yeah. because of that news coming in, coming in to my mind, to my brain, so yeah. uh, um, the, uh, the, the reaction of me whenever I feel like um, there's some form of uh, suspicion there yes, yes, or I'm not, yes, yes. I'm not sure whether it's safe or not, so I'll yes, yes, take yes, it yes. out from my bag and I always hold it. Although yes, I've yes. seen like quite a number of people walking around, but maybe it, yes, especially yes. in the half park, right? Okay. So, and then after that, it's, it was like, 
forgotten everything. I don't, I don't even know where did I put my pepper spray already. <laughs> but now oh. because of you, I need to go and check and <laughs> so that whether it can be still used or not. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Jacqueline, for for sharing. Okay. Uh, the common mistakes. Okay. Now, uh, some ladies they like to put the pepper spray inside the handbag. So let's say now your car is about maybe ten meters away, and you feel suspicious, lah. There's one guy, you know, suspicious guy. You know, sometimes there's a saying: you need to trust yourself and believe in yourself and trust your intuition that the threat may be there. It may not be a threat, but it looks like a threat, isn't it? So now, for example, if you leave your your pepper spray in your handbag, so you start to panic, number one. The second thing, when you pull out your handbag, comes out your lipstick. Instead of your pepper spray, because the size is almost the same. You see? Uh, so uh, the moral of my story is mindset. Mindset how? Very simple. Let's say now uh, you have a bunch of keys, right? Now you get your car keys. Let's say this is your car keys, right? Attach the pepper spray. There should be a ring here. Most of it has a ring. You can attach your pepper spray. So this creates a perfect mindset that it becomes a habit. Okay? So it's clarity, right? You know, it's there. You feel safe. It's there. You need your car keys. Whether it's like a key pointing, some are sophisticated keys without keyless. Some people ask me, hey, no car key, how? You still carry the pepper spray attached to you. So if you have a car key, this also can be a weapon. You hold it this way. This also a weapon. But it has to be done in a demonstration. I'm just giving an example. Okay. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, can I share with you uh, a scenario about uh, awareness? Okay, a scenario. Okay. I want you just to have an imaginative. I like to tell stories because uh, I think we all learn from stories from each other, right? Okay, now, now the concept of awareness is so simple that you may be tempted, you know, to uh, to ignore it. Ironically, it's one of the most effective way of self-defense. Okay, now. There are a lot of misconceptions about it. Misconceptions. Okay. Okay. Imagine this scenario now. You you are walking on a straight road. Okay. And in your mind, you are telling yourself, "I must turn right first and go straight." So when I turn right and go straight, now your car is far end. Okay. But when you turn right, there's another road also leading the other way. Now. Upon approaching, you notice two, two guys, okay, which are loitering, don't necessarily look dangerous, but you have a gut feeling in yourself, trust your intuition that is trouble or danger. Now, this is how you identify the threat. Not necessarily that they can be dangerous, but avoidance is the best. Prevention is better than cure. When the damage is done, it could be deadly or devastating to your poor self. So if you approach there, okay, let me ask you guys, okay, uh, now it's, it's a disturbing feeling when you see somebody suspicious before you reach your car. Of course, you feel a threat, right? As a lady, or but if a man, of course, uh, man, I will, I will not be egoistic and say man is very confident all the time. Of course, we are confident because we feel, ah, yeah, there's, there's two guys hanging around, like maybe they're just having a smoke, right? So uh, trust your intuition. Okay, trust your intuition. So I have uh, two uh, questions here. So it's like I'm open this to all audience. You can answer to Jacqueline or Omar or any of you can uh, give me the answer. Okay, okay, number one. Now. When you see these two suspicious guys before you reach your car, let's say you turn right, you go straight, your car's at the end, right? So this guy is about maybe 10 meters before your car. Or let's say even 50 meters, just not meter, 50 meters or 20 meters away from your car. 
So number one, do you walk straight there with your head eye up with confidence and thinking that you learn martial arts, you are a hero, you can walk through. That is number one question. Mm. Okay. Number two is walk there again, going to them, reach in your pocket, rest your fingers. Okay, fingers <laughs> inside your pocket and ready with your mace or pepper spray or your pocket knife. Okay, later I'll talk about rules. Okay, mm. all right. So I repeat again. The first question is walk straight to these two guys there with your head eye up, confident that you already learned martial arts, you're willing to walk and go. Okay, number one, right now. Number two, walk there straight, reach your fingers in your pocket ready with your pen knife or your pepper spray mm. now which of these questions you will follow number one and two which one you will use so i open this to the floor please i need uh, communication with everyone like for me like for me neither because why i will go and find someone to help me <laughs> okay, okay. Like, why because um, one thing is that, um, you know, it's just the physical reaction around um, if, yeah, I can do that, you know, if I, probably if I wouldn't, because if I need to choose one, it will be the second one, probably. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. then they'll be thinking around it, yeah, yeah. that what if that person is stronger than me, and then the person can avoid that, that, <laughs> because, you know, this pepper spray, all this tactic, it's known by everyone let alone the pep the the whoever that want to to go into this kind of activities right yeah, yeah, so yeah. i don't know for me the first option will be i go find someone to accompany me or yeah something yeah. something like that yeah yeah good good your, your answer <laughs> is absolutely correct oh. uh, what about you omar well you know i, I i'm not a big guy but at the same time, in my mind, I always want to fight. You know, I see <laughs> some characters. I'm thinking, okay, I'm gonna fight them. But but I'm I'm not I'm not uh, a fighter type. Uh, I'm not a big guy. And um, unfortunately for me, I also have some sense of sanity. <laughs> you know, so, yeah. so although I would uh, have my fingers in my pocket uh, to be ready, uh, you know, in the in case I need to defend myself, yeah. but I would probably just. Uh, change direction or walk past a car or uh, go somewhere else. Yeah, uh, that I would avoid it. If I uh, if I strongly suspect that there's danger, I would just walk away. Yeah. Okay. Great. 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 Great answers, both of you. Why so, did, okay, okay. I have a so question. Anything from the floor? Anything from the floor? Any? Um, uh, anyone? No else? one. Any no one now? yet. In fact, there's this uh, suggestion, but not specifically to answer that. Um, some just say, um, some suggested for some other training for self-defense and stuff. Um, yeah, but I have a question, um, following question from that scenario or the, 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 the situation. Yeah. Uh, what if, because nowadays we have our smartphone, right? Yeah. And people are pretty much afraid of those, um, recording video recording because it can go viral. Absolutely, so yeah. What if we can, you know, pretending or rather really recording, you know, the environment and get that person or that two guys aware that you're actually recording on video or rather you can announce it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> can you can do that, but uh, yeah, yeah. Yes, you can do that, but make sure you're walking in the right direction or else your handphone is going to go. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. You so know, Jack, I, I, Jack, I've actually done yes, uh, yes. where, yeah. Um, hang on, uh, Francis, just, just let me interject here. I've actually done that because um, I had an experience where I was in a restaurant with a friend and she had her handbag on the floor. Yeah. And then somebody behind her actually stole it uh, without us realizing it. I only realized that because, um, yeah, after the, yes, after the theft, I realized that that guy was actually eyeing us for quite a while. Uh, so now, oh. whenever if I'm in that situation, I would actually take my phone out and pretend to like take pictures and let him oh. see that I'm taking all these pictures. Yeah. Uh, you know, so I, I actually do that. Yeah. 
right. And, and I think people are more um, uh, uh, cautious now yes. with their pictures are uh, being taken. Yes. True, true, true. Viral videos, yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah you've got a point. But uh, you have to understand one thing. People who wear the motorbikes with helmet, they don't mm -hmm. care about you. You can put whatever. The number plate is all fake. Please. Mm. Yeah, you guys need to be more open on this also. Yeah. Motorbikes with they wear nice long, stuff. they wear long. You can't see. If they have tattoos also, they cover. You cannot see. Yeah. So um, see? so it's hard to identify now. If you you can take viral, it's good. It's good because it causes a sense a sensational of awareness to the general public. People are more cautious. They beware. It's good. But the bad, the, the pros and cons is the cons is it you, you, you never know who is a suspect. Yeah. Yes. This is the thing. Right? So I have I have a question um, around sexual harassment. I don't know whether it's still valid in this uh, discussion, but I think Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do have this discussion in uh, in a corporate because uh, yeah, for some, corporate. Of course, they are cases why they call me to do a talk because they are cases uh, the internal security guard himself sexual harassment to the worker in the office. Yeah, so maybe you can mention, share. I will not mention. I will not mention uh, which company, but uh, this is uh, PNC. Yeah. I'll share with you. Okay. okay. So this lady sometimes she stay back. As I say, sometimes you never know if it work right. So the security guard, he did it with intent. Okay. He did it to the office worker. So it became a police case. And uh, this thing, this story actually is about uh, five years back. So it became a police story, police case, and they don't want to publish it. You know, I mean, you have to understand uh, we are general public. We don't respond to the company's image. People may not like our company, all the stuff, right? Yes. So people just keep it PNC. So, uh, so the thing about this is, it is terrifying for a lady. Do you agree or not, Jacqueline? Yeah, it is. That's why it I is. ask. Yeah. Yeah, yeah because you really... trust. Yeah. Okay. The word trust. Okay. We are all trainers here. And we believe in the word trust, integrity, honor, right? Mm -hmm. Right? This is also the principle in Jujitsu. Because Jujitsu comes from the samurai, the code of the samurai. That's why the philosophy also teaches a lot of things in life, about everyday mm -hmm. life. So these people have no uh no honor about themselves they they don't have trust so if there's no trust value this employee should be terminated but they did terminate the guy and he uh this about the police case so how they avoid is have a male partner in the office or maybe two ladies to accompany you if you need to stay back late of course nowadays there are cameras everywhere cctvs but some companies, uh, maybe only outside, maybe inside, they don't want. So if there are cases, scenario, but prevention is better than cure, as I mentioned earlier, right? So it's best to install a CCTV. Mm. Because cameras do not lie. Viral right. videos did not lie. Everything is there black and white. Right. So I think, I think nowadays, the, the most effective uh, tools that we can use is video recording. Because my question just now is, yeah, I mean, your uh, example is in between someone that has maybe has um, lesser power in their organization. But if the sexual harassment is done by someone who is with higher power, probably the leader, one of the leaders in the organization to yes. their subordinate, that's yes. why it becomes more complicated that we, the ladies or, or whoever that um, experience that don't really know how to what to do right i don't even even if i put myself in her position or in her shoes i wouldn't know what to do other than keeping quiet but at the same time that's actually eating me up alive because you can't live with this kind of treatment in the office right it's so um demotivating and a lot of are the negative things that will happen to you emotionally as well so i think i i like the idea around you know like put using the smartphone or using our gadget to you know to record that silent, silently what do you think of that 
Yes, but if you're alone and you've been attacked, only the camera CCTV can help you. It, it's, you, you. You don't know. It's not going to tell you tomorrow at 3 o'clock, I'm going to come and harass you. <laughs> right? Yeah. Because you're not ready with your camera. With your camera. You never know what's going to happen. Okay, mm -hmm. I'll give you ladies a tip now. Now, you can just do it yourself. Now, look at the fingers here. Mm -hmm. Everyone, please follow me. Everyone on the participants, follow okay. me. Follow me. Yeah. Okay. If this hand, they try to harass you, sometimes the man will put their hand here, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This yeah. is already harassment. It does not matter whether it's the hand will normally come down here, right? They will put yeah. here the hand. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm doing it the opposite side. Now, grab the last finger. I call this pinky. Grab pinky, squeeze it tight, and pull downwards. I don't ah. break your. I don't break your finger. Just pull it tight. Pull it really tight. You can feel the pain. Okay. Mm. So you have subdued your enemy now. <laughs> you don't have to fight. You just have to press this hard, slap him in his face, scream, get run out of the office straight away. We make police report. Number one is police report. Your police report is very strong. You don't care. Straight go for police report. So once you've done the police report, number one, number two, you need to contact the human resource mm. and proceed with legal proceedings. It does not matter whether it's high position or low position. <laughs> Action should be taken. Women should be treated with respect. I believe this. So I think you have your women rights. There are also a uh, special division, which I know. Uh, a friend of mine is a police. Okay, so I'll not mention his name. Okay. So in IPK, there's a woman commissioner, I think she's a high, high position. She's in charge of uh, crime against women. So they will protect you. So like you say, you have videos, you have cameras, all these modern gadgets can also use as a tool of evidence. You need concrete evidence because sexual harassment is a very sensitive issue. Don't you agree that? So you need to deal it you need to deal with this properly. Right. Okay, uh, can I uh, tell all of you a story now, a short story, very quickly. Is there still time? Yes. Because I'm not looking at the time. No, it's okay. Yeah, we still have time. Okay. Uh, I thought there's someone asked about more training, right? Mm. Yeah, is that a male, female? Uh, it's male. Okay, okay, yeah. it, does not, it does not matter. Okay, good, good. All right. Training is good. You can actually advance your skills of training and also try to develop a mindset of uh, avoiding confrontation. Okay, this is a true story which happened in uh, somewhere overseas. I will not mention which country. This is true. This happened about three years back, not very long. Okay, I will not use the exact name of the person. Okay, her name is Mary, not a real name. <laughs> right? Now, she is walking towards like a 7 Eleven. This guy came out from there and he spat on her face Fritos. Fritos could be some uh, fizzy drink or what, I don't know what they call that. Mm. Okay, I saw this on the internet. It is it's a true story. Okay, someone chat. He's a kickboxer, okay? Hardcore kickboxer probably can kick some guys too, you know? <laughs> so, this guy spat Fritos on her face and he attacked her. But the good thing is, she's a boxer, right? So boxers are very flexible. They can move right, left, right? So she swift to the left or right and get punch him. Punch him a few times, she punched his lights out and he went down. So this guy fell down. But most importantly, please listen. She did a big mistake. She went down and leaned and looked at the guy whether he is seriously hit. And do you know what happened? She got up from the floor, he took out a brass knuckle. You know what's a brass knuckle? Mm. A brass knuckle is a sharp brass, connects all your fingers with a knife. And he punched it right in the nose, the cavity of the nose, and she broke her nose, and the blood went to his shirt. So there was police nearby. They thought that this is his blood. They thought he's the victim. So they separated the both of them and they found out that she is the victim. 
Mm. You see what happened? Yeah. So the moral of my story, it does not mean that you have a black belt, even if it is me. When you strike your enemy or the attacker, strike him down and run and flee. Do not stand there. How do you know who is he? Who you are dealing with? It could be a gangster. You just call for backup and you are finished. Once you have done the job, run. So the moral of my story, you don't deserve to be a dead hero with a medal around your neck. Nobody's going to give you a medal around your neck for being a dead hero. Mm. Love yourself, love your family, be a responsible citizen, defend yourself rightfully. Yes, it's not wrong. Beat these lights out and run for your life. And also take this photograph, not to forget, why roll the thing? Okay, because mm. after all, if there are CCTV that you are not in the wrong, you do not start the fight, the attacker attack you. So he can be jailed for assault. Okay, so any of you have other questions like uh, yeah. maybe didn't cross your mind? Yeah, you're I supposed have to carry in your car. Your yeah, vehicle. I have a question because yes. you mentioned about, you know, getting ready and, um, you know, uh, what are the things that... Okay, I have this question because I can relate to myself. Um, you know, sometimes we do go for our evening walk and sometimes we carry small knife, right? Um, but then at the back of my mind, will this be effective enough in, in case that, um, you know, that things really happen to me or to us, me and my friend? So knife. But I'm also seeing other hikers, they have the hiking stick and they have umbrella although it's not raining but i guess that's their way of you know getting themselves ready so what do uh, you think of that umbrella is okay hmm. umbrella can be a tool of uh, what you call this a uh, defense but knife you have to understand malaysian law i'm not a lawyer i'm not a lawyer not police okay but i get i have police friends okay so hmm. uh you're not supposed to carry any knife above two inches Camping knife, camping knife, okay. You know the Swiss knife, mm. two inches. It's for camping. Okay, so you can say this is my camping knife. It's my hobby. So your intent is different. If you carry a knife this long, <laughs> can you see everyone? Yeah, that's you carry long. this. That's like. A... <laughs> you will probably get about ten years in jail free makan. Hmm. Well, maybe you like to educate us. What do you mean by carrying? It's like it has to be carrying by your okay. hand on all your right, hand. Okay. Or... All right, all right. Sure, yeah. sure. I'll give you, I'll give you some idea here. So, uh, uh, such thing like knives, these, these are called concealed weapons. Because your knife is concealed, right? If it's two inches, it's okay. But then again, if you accidentally cut one of its arteries, it leads to its death. Then you're going to go to court, get a good lawyer. So remember, if you have a knife, you must know how to use it. Okay, strike the place which is not vital. I'll give you an example now. I'm going to use a marker pen. Look at my hand here. Can everyone see? Yes. Now, I'll show you the main artery. Okay, artery number one. Your blood is going to go shooting non stop. Okay. Number two. Can you see the line, everyone? Okay. Can you see? Yeah. yeah. These are the dangerous arteries. If if you get slashed. So if you want to use it, you must be very careful. Right? If you just cut on the hand like this, it's okay, but not on the arteries. But when you are in panic stage, hard to say. I did not say anything about this. <laughs> Very sensitive, and you are. You must be a well-trained person to understand the anatomy of the knife, uh, which part of the body you're not supposed to touch. Uh, so you can also use this, which I call this a top slide. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe okay. you have any to... any sort of. A, yeah, the torch light actually can be a weapon. Let's say now. Uh, that guy is weaponless. Yeah, he wants to aggress you. So you can aim this to the eye. 
when you aim this for the eye, it's distracted by this with his two eyes, correct or not? Mm. Right? Now, at this point, this is called decision making. Huh? When you do this to his eyes, he's blinded for the two seconds. You can kick him a few times on his kneecap, his shin, his groin. A few times, run and scream. This is what you ladies can do. Knife, I discourage you. Mm -hmm. God, it is dangerous. Okay, unless you are really trained in a knife system, you know the uh, which artery you're not supposed to do and all that stuff. So, uh, so you can buy a simple post light, even from Pasamalam or some tactical shop, camping shops. You can buy. So this is a, a useful tool. Distract. You can feel it's quite distracting, right? So this can be a tool for you. And pepper spray. So, uh, Francis, if I uh, can ask you the next question. Uh, while not everybody is into fighting, yep. uh, would you recommend that everybody has some very basic form of uh, um, striking skill? Yeah. Uh, and yeah. what, would that, what would that be? Uh, what, what, what very most basic skills should a person have in order to be able to defend themselves? Okay. Uh, basically, you can learn any martial arts which you prefer. There is no martial art in this world is going to promise you that you're going to be a hero. Of course. Or you're going to be the best in this world. Mm -hmm. So this is the misconception or controversy. People always think in their mind. Oh, this is best. This is best. Okay. Do what you think you are comfortable with. If you like boxing, go ahead. If you like Muay Thai, go ahead. If you like Jiu Jitsu, go ahead. It's like I kill go ahead because uh, some people they they have their own preference, right? Some like coffee, some like tea. So it's up to you which you choose. So okay, let me give you a very simple uh, example. When you learn self defense, it does not matter whether you're male or female. Number one, you have developed basic skills. Number two, you have self confidence. Mm. Number three. You are not afraid of the dark because you are a very confident person and you are alert. Because any martial arts will always train you up here. That is if you are sorry to say that if the master is good. Okay, a good master will educate you both ways. Streetwise, number one. Number two, right? Streetwise means awareness of the surroundings. How to use tools on the ground. You are pushed to the ground. What is a weapon? Sand, stone, sticks on the ground. All this is a weapon. Use it. Improvise. Okay, a pen like this can improvise into a weapon. Go, oh, you can go this very fast. You must know where to strike. So you need training. So having a torch like, like this also you can use for striking. So if you're a boxer, you know how to strike, you can strike, and you can give him a jab, you know. Okay, flash the light and jab him in the face, kick him in his groin. And make your run. Don't stay there. Hit and run. Take photographs at the same time. If it's so dark at night, you can't see. Run for your life. Love yourself. Don't be like Mary. Mary bend down, big boxer, punch in the nose. Weapons will come at the end. Sometimes people don't show you their weapons. This is the most dangerous part. When yeah. they keep a knife, they might stab you. Do you think it's worth it? Do you want your family to see you in ICU? No, right? Please love yourself. Another question. My advice. Yeah, um, specifically for ladies, probably um, all those all those types of uh, martial arts, right? Um, which which are the those martial arts that you recommend uh, for ladies? Ladies. Yeah. It's a uh, very hard for me to say because uh, I myself, so I of course I am pro, I am also a master mm -hmm. in Jiu so or maybe I, I, maybe. Okay, I understood. Probably you because... can learn Aikido. Okay, you can learn Aikido, you can learn yeah. Jiu Jitsu, you can learn boxing. Right. You can learn Muay Thai. All this is very useful. Yeah. Like it's, it's, but it's... You must train your mind too, not only your skill. Huh? Train your mind too. But I, obviously, I, as I said earlier, right, I invite Jacqueline Omar. You can come for my class for free. Yeah. <laughs> I give you three lessons, you can come. Anyone can come for a free lesson. Just, you know. Have fun, try it out, uh, build your mindset, your, your warrior, what I call is a warrior mindset. Because uh, why I choose Jiu Jitsu, I also did Muay Thai before. I learned from a Thai master. Mm. Right? 
So uh, later I hybrid, I hybrid Jiu Jitsu. My Jiu Jitsu is traditional, it's different from the Brazilian. Okay. Yeah. Even the Brazilian is also they learn during the war from a Japanese. Yeah. Uh, One thing that I realized, my experience with uh, martial arts guru, yeah, I have this good friend also, he's a Muay Thai guru, he's a Thai, and he has this, not only him, I've met a number, and you have the same approach when it comes to life, when it comes to mindset. It's like, as if like um, life is so much easier if you really can master your own brain, your own mind. So yes. that's where coming from. Absolutely. So I like to talk with uh, martial arts guru because I think they are different. They, they look at things differently and they are very yes. reflective and they can translate that despite of, you know, my understanding martial arts is about self-defense, you know, like show, showing off or rather, quote unquote, showing off your, your skills in martial arts, but it's actually not that. First thing is you as a human being, being nice, being nice human. Yeah. So I'm, I, I so admire on, on that side of uh, yeah. martial arts. And yeah, these are gurus that I met. Yeah. And it's the same as you. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, what Jacqueline has said is actually is true. That's a fact. That's a, that's yeah. a fact. But I like the philosophy part because it, uh, life is a learning lesson. You know Bruce Lee, right? Yeah. What he says, is, his famous quote, I'm sure you know Omar, be like water. Yes, I like. Okay, what does that mean actually? What does that mean? Be like water means adaptation. Yeah. You go in a teacup, it becomes a tea. You go in a teapot, it becomes a teapot. So adaptation to the environment. So you must know how to react. Right? Let's say now uh, uh, you've seen people fighting in MMA, right? Yeah. Yeah. Now, to become an MMA fighter, you need at least two skills. Boxing or jiu-jitsu and jiu-jitsu or jiu-jitsu and uh, you know Muay Thai. Yeah, you need at least two skills because if you think you are good in striking, you're gonna lose the guy with the grappling. If you're good in grappling, use the guy with the stand up. So there's no such thing as a super martial arts. Right. You learn from each other. You need to combine to become a hybrid. Combine two martial arts, that will become close to perfect. Wow. Okay. You need two. That's why I learned from other masters about knife. Right. I learned. Interesting. So I think that one yeah. how to learn and how long and all those maybe if you uh, will want to know more about hybrid jujitsu, uh, you know how you who you can contact, uh, which is which is in front of our. Yeah, partner. I also uh, specialize with a knife also. Oh, knife just, these arms escapes. How you escape? Uh, one more thing I'd like to add, uh, sorry, uh, psychology of confrontation, how you deal with the group. This is very important. Mm. Most people forget when they panic. What's your tip? Psychology of confrontation. What's your tip? Quick tips maybe. Okay, quick tips. Very simple. Okay, you take a hot iron rod and you put inside the water. What did you hear? What do you hear? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that is how a person when he gets angry, right? Don't fight fire and fire. Fight water element and fire. Fire and fire will not solve your issue. You will burn to death. It's the saying of a samurai. You take layers of metal, all the five elements. Huh? The fire, the water, the wood, the wind, earth, all these are energy, right? So that's from the samurai blade as very philosophical. Yeah. So you have to understand energies to uh, decision making is also important. That's why the Sanzu Ada War can use in business. I can translate how you use in workplace and also 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 you can use in uh, combat. In your if you're a martial artist, you can use that concept. Decision making. When you drive, you're gonna take overtake, right? You have only two seconds. Correct me if I'm wrong. Two seconds, correct. Now, when you're dealing with someone with a knife, you only got two seconds. Do not fight, please. Give everything. You go back home happy. Now, when you show your aggression, your ego, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. you'll probably be a dead person. You get slashed here on your arteries, you're gone. You get slashed in your lungs, you're gone. So, please be safe. 
love yourself and your family think about safety number one if you guys need me for second episode i can talk about what you're supposed to carry in the car the malaysian yeah. law uh, so be careful uh. don't simply carry uh. knife and stick in the car uh, you <laughs> yes, can go to jail people, they even put um what do you call that thing that um like a baton you know like i don't know what they call that baton. Baton. A bat? Is bat. It, it's like a huge long thing Actually, yeah, you can't, actually, you can't carry baton, you can't carry baseball bat, you cannot carry hockey stick. Oh, is that right? Yes. Yeah, some people they put that even because I'm I'm quite um, <laughs> um, loyal to Grab, <laughs> and sometimes <laughs> I'm seeing that in the car. But for me, it's like probably it's for this person, the driver's protection. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. It, it's okay. It's okay. You can have, but if you carry a stick, a small stick, it's okay. Don't carry. Uh, metal pieces like uh, aluminium, uh, steel bars, uh, you know, don't use ceiling lock, all these are dangerous. Oh, right. Hockey stick, make sure your hockey player, there's a ball in your car. <laughs> okay. You can carry a hockey stick, make sure you hockey ball there. <laughs> okay. Okay. okay, and your protective and your protective elements like your knee guard. Okay, if you are playing <laughs> uh, baseball, make sure you got gloves there with the baseball and the ball. Okay, <laughs> right. So if you get roadblock, I'm sorry, I can't help you. <laughs> oh, so those yeah. umbrella, umbrella will be the safest. Huh? Umbrella. Yeah. Sorry. Umbrella will be the safest. Metal. Yes. Um, umbrella, pepper spray. Okay. Mm. Uh, online sometimes you can see gadgets. It looks like a ring, and, and it looks like a yeah, I saw that. Like a meow meow. Okay. It looks yeah. like a cat. Huh? So uh, these are good for boxing. You know, those who learn boxing is good. It distract. You know, distraction. You must know where to strike and escape, you know. Yeah. So it, it's not about how much how much martial arts you know. It's what you know. What can make you a better person to survive in this cruel world? Okay. Nowadays, there's no people with with a good, hard to find a good person nowadays. <laughs> yeah. Let you know, while, oh, sorry. while it sounds um uh while we have a lot of theories on how to um what to use and you know what to do things like that, would you recommend that people go through some form of a, a practical experience so that at least they have a sense of uh, how it feels? Yeah, yeah because yeah. You, you can talk about uh, pepper sprays and holding keys and things like that, but when the actual situation happens, if you've never experienced it, uh, you, you're probably going to panic, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, so do you have safety classes? Um, Okay, uh, yes, yes, I do have corporate safety classes. So I will go very quickly. I won't take much of your time, okay? All right, okay, I'll just share with you. Number one, I will talk about body language. Okay, so proactive role, you come on and you perform. We guys demo and you have to do a demo. Number one, also video aids, live videos, and practical applications. Number two, when how to identify threat? How do you behave when you're in the car park? Let's say in a shopping mall, the first thing in the corporate world, first thing in the shopping mall, identify where is all the panic button. Number one. Number two, you can escape, go inside the mall, run to the mall, find security office, inform security. Okay, if nobody is chasing you, you need to run. Unless your intuition, you feel somebody hiding behind your car. Somebody hiding behind the pillar now. Okay, one more thing I forgot to mention. Now, not forgot to mention. I like to add in. Have a criminal mind. Mm. Have a criminal mind. Think like a criminal. How a criminal behave? Hide behind the car, waiting for you to pounce on you. Hiding behind the maybe outside the lift, maybe in the pillar near the car park. Unfortunately, wrong time, the wrong place, you pass there, you become a target. Mm. So, at the end of this uh, session, before we end, also, I'd like to also recap what I've taught you earlier, share with you. Don't be an easy target. Easy target means not paying attention, playing with your phone, SMSing, even driving, don't SMS. Big risk number one. Okay, that is called easy target. Walking to the car park, whether it's day or night, scan the area now if you are going home every night you drive home right so mm -hmm. one night when you go back you see one motorbike outside your house 
if I was you, I will not go home. I will make one round first. If the guy is still there, okay, if the motorbike is still there outside your house, suspicious figure, do not go back. Go somewhere, have some tea tarik, call your husband or your wife or inform somebody is outside, suspicious, don't open the door, nothing, until the guy go off. So you never know, like I said earlier, who is the suspect and who is the innocent guy. You never know. So to prevent crime, sometimes motorbike they pretend, you know, the survey. There are cases long time ago, you know, right? Open the gate, you come out, they snatch you. When you go back from work, you open the gate, you go, you come out from the car, right? They jump from the motorbike, run inside your house, grab your handbag. Mm. That is the time you can use your self-defense. <laughs> okay, knee kick the guy, take him down. So that's where all these skills happen. So these are some of the things that you discuss in your um, safety classes. Yeah, and I also give them simulation. That means I off all the lights and I only on one or two lights and make it really dim and scary. I call this the black corridor. Black corridor is adaptation to a different situation. Means whatever you learn throughout the session, you see, I have different layers of learning. Once you've completed all the layers of learning, I'm going to put you in a very difficult situation that you don't expect daylight all the time. So mm -hmm. I'm going to off the lights and on maybe one or two lights and you have to walk and my voice is going to attack you in a different situation. So you're going to apply what you have learned, how you're going to use it. So at the end of my session, I'm going to have an open topic for corporate questions and answers. Mm. Please ask me anything as you please. Whether inside your car, how you react when somebody already jumped behind your car. Before you enter your car, what you're supposed to do. What is the safe distance to this pepper spray. Mm. The tactical approach, how you enter your car, how you open your car. Mm. Have you seen movies? A police guy, the police car, they open the door this way, right? And they stand behind the car and aim. Do you know why to do that? That is a shield. So that is the way to enter your car. The door is your shield. If the guy comes from the opposite, you can shoot with a pepper spray, get in your car, lock your windows. But some ladies, they forget. They think it's a comfort zone. No crime. So that must alarm, what you Lipstick, lipstick first. Forget to lock the window. So what happened? You become target. So these are the habits you must cultivate. Make it second nature. Think safe. Lock your doors all the time. Right. So for public, right? The one for corporate, for public, do you have um, like a center that people can learn about jujitsu, hybrid jujitsu? Yes, yeah. you you can contact me. You have my number, right? Yeah. <laughs> you guys can contact me. I do a lot of corporate, uh, also for the security side, also for restraining, right. restraining, uh, restraining attackers, uh, what they call it, difficult customers. How you how you, how do you handle difficult customers? Mm. They come to your place nice. for the security personnel to handle. So also, I add in some communication skills. That is very important. Is the way you talk. As the saying goes, your eyes are window to your soul. The yeah. way you talk to people, the way you look, is very important. Right? right? Yeah. yeah. So it is very, very important. Is uh, the behavior, the human behavior, and the way you talk, the way you smile, the way you approach is very important. Yeah. Yeah. True. True. Yeah. Well. So I, yes. I also huh? ask uh, the public. I mean, sorry. Yeah. Uh, I also ask the uh, participants to ask more questions. I encourage them. They even ask me, somebody breaking my house, how do I handle it? Mm. Hold my son, hold my son hostage, how to handle it? But this I have to do demo. The right. psychology, that is already the psychology part. Right, right. If you want to avoid any injuries, it's best to surrender everything. Yeah. You, can earn, okay. you can earn back your money. Let him take your plasma TV. It's okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's okay. Let him have your plasma TV. You don't have to uh, fight with him and you get stabbed. And your husband get injured and your children get injured so at the end of my day is uh, i would like to say is stay safe love your family love yourself if you love yourself think about your own safety okay and okay. i'm open to anyone who can contact me on my handphone you can give them my number yeah you are most welcome to ask me any questions any time of the day all right 
So please, you can contact me like... if you want to learn some Jiu-Jitsu stuff. All right, yes. Yeah. So for those who want to know further about hybrid Jiu-Jitsu, um, hybrid, hybrid. Francis, yeah, uh, Francis Albert's uh, website, uh, Facebook is in the comment section, uh, in the caption. You can actually even uh, search, look for him in, on uh, Facebook search, uh, Francis Albert. The spelling is in the caption as well. All right, so thank you so much. I learned a lot about um, the topic today. And also what the things that I like the most is about not only the physical part of the martial arts and self-defense, but the most important part is the mindset. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. how it is. And yeah, well, I think like what you have put or what you have been uh, stressing it out from the beginning is about loving yourself, loving the community, loving your family. So if, if that's not good enough for us to have the awareness, to be alert, I, I don't think, I don't know what else can make us alert or be aware. Right. So, uh, yeah, I completely agree. I think uh, what's important is the uh, the mindset, uh, and uh, with a awareness mindset, you can actually uh, stay out of trouble, prevent yourself from getting uh, into um, into trouble, and um, and I think uh, yeah, give give uh, Francis a call. Uh, you know, um, you don't have to necessarily learn about jujitsu, like Francis is saying but you can uh, learn about how to have an, uh, an awareness concept to prevent uh, yourself from putting, from allowing yourself to be in dangerous positions. All right, yeah. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. Uh, I'm seeing quite a number of viewers uh, today. And in fact, um, let me also acknowledge one of our, my friends, uh, Saladin Kamarudin. He is a retired um, Navy, not Navy, I'm not sure, I don't remember, but he's in the Army. Um, yeah, a lot of this uh, self-defense is the last effort in the battle when you're already exhausted all resources, resources such as ammunition or fire power and the rest, right? So exactly aligned with what... Um, Francis mentioned earlier. So that's all for today. Uh, thank you so much for your support and thank you for tuning in again and again to support us, to give us this encouragement. Um, on Sunday, we have the POVX SSEN, uh, Point of View X Sabah Social Entrepreneurs uh, Network. Uh, it will be, we have a, uh, a very interesting personality, Monica Kim. Uh, she is known all over the world. Uh, she is an advocate of the well-being of our Mother Earth. Um, to be specific about our ocean. So we want to know more about her, what's happening all over the world. And really, I told her, Monica, I think the best title for you is that if you want to die fast, buang plastic merata-rata. All right? <laughs> well, this is just a joke. But okay, so that's all for today. Thank you so much. So we shall end the session now. Thank you. Thank you. Okay.